Hello everyone, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. Me and Adam are still out in Saudi Arabia. Still loving life? Yeah, it's been great down here. I've really enjoyed my time so far. I'm still here for another couple of days and uh, I mean, it's different, isn't it? It's something new. I've enjoyed it so far and I'm just enjoying the nice enough weather. Uh, I've heard back home is really bad at the minute, so I'm not going to brag, but I think it's great over here. Yeah, I heard it's snowing back home which I'm not looking forward to coming back so uh, snow can bugger off by the time uh, I get back home but we had to just to talk a little bit about Newcastle United obviously we've got the, the shirts on as well uh, reflect a little bit on the Al Halal bit of transfer speculation and of course Newcastle going forward so last night Adam I mean we would we met outside the stadium just look just along is it that way or that way we're near it anyway I didn't expect 5-0 I'm sure you didn't expect 5-0 either no I didn't uh I mean, I expect Newcastle to win, to be honest. I'm always confident in the team. But Al Ahal or the most decorated Asia team ever. I mean, I expect that to be a very highly competitive game. First half it was. I think it was, uh, I think first 30 minutes, Al Ahal had some decent chances there. Once Newcastle got that second goal from Joe Linton, that's when the game started to turn into our favour a lot more. Second half, fitness levels were just, we were superior at them in every area of the pitch yesterday. I mean, I didn't think it was a, a bad performance with anyone. I thought everyone did good. And uh, I'm just... That was a really promising performance. That uh, I know both teams are missing players in the World Cup, but a lot of players stepped up yesterday. I felt like so Murphy played well. Uh, Longstaff when he came off the bench, while he was good as well. And just a an all around great team performance. I've been really happy with uh, the team. Eddie Howe's clearly got the fitness levels working in the the training session so far here, and what a win that was. Great to see Dylan Stevenson get off the mark. You know, local lad, Blythe boy. Um, I seen in the couple of the uh, local media, Caris was getting a lot of praise. Kept it in the game the first half. Yeah, I thought all the youngsters were great, to be honest, yes. I mean, second half, half the team's full of youngsters, players that a lot of fans haven't seen before. And we, we were still better than Al Hell, even with the youngsters on, even with Chris Wood's injury being at St. Maxim was up top for a decent amount of time. It was one of those sort of ones where it was an opportunity for players to step up. Well, you got to remember, a couple of weeks' time, we got Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup before we returned to the Premier League. So it's a good opportunity for players to step up to prove Eddie Howe that in this round of 16 match, I can do it. So... Yeah, uh, I thought the youngsters yesterday were great. I uh, haven't watched uh, any of the new signs before, so it was great to see. Obviously, I've seen a bit of Dylan Stevenson last season. Uh, he's been brilliant uh, for the under 23s. So to see him score yesterday, it was a great move for him and his family. So very promising stuff. And it was great to see Eddie Howe give a lot of the youth players a tryout in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, cool. Yeah, the, the, the lads will be buzzing out. They've mixed in with the first team out here for the full week. Eddie Howe's squad are still here for a couple more days. Uh, but yeah, it's great um, fitness for the lads as well. Uh, but yeah, 5-0, it's incredible. But you know, the away just off the pitch as well. Obviously, it's a great win. In a gr but obviously, Amanda's here. Dan Ashworth's here. Darren Eels is here. Shola's here. Wh who have I missed? Mia Dad and Yasser Al Rumi. And they're all here off on the board. We've seen a lot of deals commercially happening recently. And obviously, they're having a lot of meetings this week. Do you, are we expecting a lot more announcements from Saudi companies back in Newcastle? Maybe not for the same being. Uh, I think for now we're quiet down after the trip. Uh, of course, we've got the likes of Funny Yet going at the end of the season. Um, that's when I think things will start to come into play. So I think behind the scenes now and during the trip to Saudi Arabia, obviously I might be having loads of meetings with different companies. And you've seen so far this week from Newcastle the amount of stuff will be announced. And Newcastle's quite a marketable club in Saudi Arabia. It's a huge prospect for people in Saudi Arabia. Coming here, winning final against the best team you have to offer. It, it makes us look very good. And of course, with the projections of the club, we was probably expecting to finish in Europe this season. It's one of those ones where it were highly attractable now to Saudi Arabia, and I expect a lot more things to happen with it in the future. I've already seen it with uh, Noon on the shirt. It's going to keep happening. Uh, we're going to get new sponsors. Hell, even the name of St. James's Park might change because Darwin Hills has talked about the prospect of that. So uh, there'll be a lot of things happening around the club with Saudi Arabia, which people do need to be aware of. But ultimately, it's going to give us a lot more money, which will benefit us in a club sense. I talked about it on the channel the other day about growing the brand. You know, we've been stopped how many times and we've been out just a couple of hours, just as we got stopped in the supermarket, people driving past Honk the Horns, welcome to Riyadh, Newcastle last night, we both did uh, for the game as well. They're trying to grow the brand and obviously Saudi Arabia is a very young nation. Do you see their project happening where Newcastle United becomes their second club after the likes of Al Nassar and Al Halal at Newcastle is their favourite European side? Well, yeah, I would say so. Um, well. I mean, just any 
any country outside the UK, everyone's got a favourite Premier League team. For example, us, we have a favourite NFL team or any different sport you might watch. So it's one of those ones where Saudi Arabia fans, I mean, obviously I was sitting next to a lot of Al Ahal fans yesterday at the game and they were chanting for Newcastle at the end, it was crazy. So. Mad that -ness. I've never, I've never experienced that ever. Yeah, neither. Well, it's just one of those sort of things really where fans in different countries, they've got a favourite Premier League team, of course. It's, it's one of those sort of ones, Premier League is such a huge league. Everyone's going to have their favourite team, for example. Me, I, have, I like Boston a lot, it's my favourite La Liga team. So it's one of them sort of things, really. Uh, I think over the next couple of years, we see the attendance, for example, it's going to grow further and further in Saudi Arabia. And it's, it's like a project over here. And uh, now that was the, the foundations laid yesterday. And over the next few years, it would just rise and rise and rise. It was uh, brilliant to see the... Just the beginning yesterday. I actually, Sadie Castle won a trophy as well. Wow, it'll be the first in Maddie, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, it's not a trophy. Yeah. No, <laughs> uh, I'm going to pretend, but uh, no, it was a great morale boost. That was a little bit over the top, the presentation. Well, probably, yeah. You can see with some of the players were a bit awkward with uh, the trophy presentation, but no, I still think it's good for the team. Um, it's one of those sort of things where the player have that experience that can think, well, listen, we've had the pretend yesterday, a few moments' time, Carabao Cup, FA Cup, how a few years' time from now, uh, the players will want more. I think that's a good sort of boost in their head for that. So, uh, no, I, I think it was I think it was a good thing for them. I don't think it was overly uh, unnecessary. I think there was some benefit to it, but I think it was, we probably was a little over the top of the, all was, the fireworks, yeah. It was a little I've learned something new. Barcelona's the second favourite team. Well, I used to be uh, a bit of a messy fan boy, to be honest, a bit of a plastic messy boy. But uh, now, um, I mean, everyone has their favourite team from outside the UK. So it's well, if I told you I've been to the camp now, would that make you jealous? I've been there as well, so. Oh, you have yeah. been. <laughs> if I told you I've seen Messi score a hat trick. I'm jealous of that. I, I've never seen Messi play with his injury when I was there. So. Oh, what a nightmare that was. Anyways, we'll get back to Newcastle stuff. Obviously, it's December. The transfer window was coming. We are going to be linked to Adam. Left, right and centre to every player under the sun. The James Madison one just won't go away. Of course, he, he talked about it last week, joking on that the, the, the Newcastle boys and the England squad are winding them up about the transfer and the, obviously the fiction on Boxing Day. Is that the player that we should go for? Well, Madison's a tricky one because uh, Leicester, before the World Cup, started picking up a bit of momentum. Uh, he's a player that is high in demand. He's a player that a lot of clubs will want. He's an expensive player as well. I know his contract is starting to run down at Leicester, but if we want to sign him in the January transfer window, it's going to cost us a lot of money. Uh, on the Madison side of things, I do generally believe that the player wants to join Newcastle. I mean, you got to think about Do you about want him, though? Do you want him? Yeah, yeah, I would. Uh, I think he's a brilliant player. Um, I know he's obviously not the youngest player, but I still think he's got... Five, six top uh, years where, left in. Where, where, if he, so we're saying Madison in January. Where does he play for you? Does Eddie change the formation or does he stick him in one of those three midfield positions? <clears throat> well, that, that's the thing. Um, obviously, he likes the Isaac as well. You've got him coming in. I mean, you can't play Isaac and Wilson in the same team on this formation. Now, I don't think Eddie Howe is going to change the formation, to be honest. I think he's very happy for the team players at the minute. Uh, as for Madison, I mean, you obviously will play in the midfield for a uh, I don't know which three would play, to be honest, because I know a lot of people are going to go, oh, we play Joel Aiton, Madison, Bruno, how that's a midfield three, but those, would those three be the best combination you want? Uh, it's just a tricky one. Um, when I look at signings for Newcastle, I always kind of want versatile players, so people that can play multiple positions. I think Dan Burns is a good example. We sign him as a centre-half, all of a sudden now he's our main choice left-back, so he's those sort of players you want in those multiple position players that can come in for injuries. They're sort of the key ones I look at. Uh, Madison, I mean, yeah, I think he can do that. Uh, I think he has played in the wing before, as far as I'm aware. Uh, obviously, he mainly plays in the midfield, so it's, it's a trick you want to get done. Um, I'm not confident on it getting done, to be honest. I think the club will try and, and put a approach him, but it's one of those sort of ones where just the time's not great for us. It is obviously the Daily Mail saying it's unlikely happening, but we'll have to see on that, Craig, or put that out earlier on this week in Riyadh as well. Is there any way in that starting 11 that you personally would like to say we need to strengthen or we need backup too? Yeah, I think there are definitely some areas. Uh, centre back's a big one, I think. Uh, obviously, if Bot Bot and Shaw gets injured, you got to remember as well. Shaw's a lot older. I mean, eventually you can't replace him and get someone else. Just turned thirty-one, hasn't he? Yeah, so. Um Eventually, you do need to bring a centre back in. So I think that's an area we need to look at. Uh, centre midfield, as well. You just said there. Uh, I think that's a no area. Again, Bruno Jordan, one against one of them gets injured. You got some problems to look at. So I think those two key areas are places you want to look at. I, think I said a winger at the start of the season, but then Alm one just turns out of nowhere. It was probably the best career season his career. So. I, I want to put in because I think a winger is still priority. I'll tell you why. Miggy's having the season of, of his life. Of course he is. Maxi's injured, coming back. And you've got Ryan Fraser, of course, you've got Joe Linton who can move out there as well. But the players keep coming off the bench, and I look at him and I think Jacob Murphy. 
I think it's a winger that we need to go and strengthen. A, to give Maxi competition, Miggy competition, and also improve that bench. Well, I think the bench as a whole, you've seen a lot of Premier League matches, I think the bench does need to strengthen it, no doubt about it. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't just put it solely in Jacob Murphy. Uh, I mean, yesterday you looked good, to be honest, uh, but uh, obviously, over time, you get European football, for example, you're going to need players in there that can compete at the high levels. Uh, we've got a lo lot of long-serving players at the club. I mean, a decent amount of these players are either brought into the Championship season to get us back up or just brought in the Premier League to be just uh, good enough to keep us in the league. But we're at that stage now where we strive to become more than that. And as, um, obviously, there are a few players at the club where long-term, they're just not going to have much of a future. So, yeah, I think winger-wise, we obviously do need to get some backup in. Sim Maxson's injury prone and one, uh, God forbid, he doesn't get injured. Uh, if one of them gets injured, that's where you've got to start looking at a bit of concern. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you can see this all over the pitch, to be honest. Uh, we do need backup, that's the main thing we should be looking at. But I'm very happy with the start 11 so far this season. We've been performing extremely well. Yeah, we are. We're flying up. We've got one more question for you. We are flying. We're third in the league, and obviously, the, we've got the home game against uh, Rio. Uh, it is Valacano, isn't it? Um, which I think is next week. Is it next week already? I think it's the 15th. The 15th, uh, and we'll be there, of course. Um, last question then. Eddie Howe's talked about it. Is he playing financial fair play down? Obviously, people are saying that Newcastle have got tons of money to splash, but Eddie Howe's said that financial fair play might mean one in, one out. Well, you've got to remember Eddie Howe and the club as well. They're not going to tell the media everything because let's just say now oh, we've got 100 million to spend in January we're going to do this we're going to do that well clubs are now going to know that information they're going to use it against us so uh, it's very wise of the club not to give away too much information I mean I remember a lot of journalists in the summer time saying at the start of the window we only had a 50, pound, uh, 50 million pound budget quid, eh? <laughs> yeah imagine <laughs> and, that of course we spend more than uh, more than Isaac alone so um, yes I, I think he's bluffing to be honest I think you will be misleading the media just in a sense to benefit Newcastle, not, not Eddie Howe being a dick or anything, it's just how it is. Uh, I do expect Newcastle to spend a decent amount of money in the window, I think maybe 60, 70 million, if I'm going to be honest. I don't think we'll probably buy too many players, I think we might get a couple of key players in and maybe an odd loanee or somebody there that's going to rotate. Uh, I think the club is very happy where we are at the minute. It's important not to sell too many players either, you don't want to destroy them around in the dressing room. But yes, I think we'll spend a decent amount of money in the window again. Yeah, I think it'll only be possibly one in maybe two maximum, and maybe people who aren't playing in much football, but the squad's getting a lot of uh, running time at the minute, so there's 15, 16 players who are getting a regular run out. I can only see one or two of the fringe players possibly even. Um, it would, would be nice if we can try and get some of them lone guys who are out, like Jeff Hendrick and Isaac Hayden, off the books completely, but that's probably not going to happen until the end of the season. But, yeah, we're in Abdullah Park here in Riyadh, in Saudi Arabia. Make sure you check Adam's uh, channel out as well, especially the supermarkets. <laughs> you had me in stitches earlier on. You'll see the, have a look at the channel. You'll see what I mean. From uh, Riyadh, from Adam and me. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye. See you.